Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we are gathering together from wherever we are coming from in our own little corner of the world, we know that all of the world is the home of our Heavenly Father. And whenever we're in our parents' house, we are home. So whether this is the first time that you've ever gathered with us, or if you've been gathering with us for years, welcome home, everyone. A couple of quick announcements up here at the beginning, uh, just to uh, kind of key some things in. Uh, we will be celebrating Holy Communion today. We'll do that in a continuous fashion, coming forward and communing at the front of the aisle, returning by the side aisle when we are done. Um, you'll get uh, the wafers from me and then the either clear juice or the red wine uh, in the little individual cups, dropping your cup into what we lovingly call the Holy Garbage Can will be up here at that point. Uh, and all are welcome to join together in the Lord's Supper. Uh, we're also, a reminder, we are passing the offering plate uh, during that part of the worship as well. Although if you dropped some physical offering back in the offering box, that's just fine. We'll get that as well. And then our online giving of Banco is available on our website. If you prefer to give digitally, that is uh, also, also an option. I um, want to point out on our first and our last hymns today, make sure you pay attention to the verses. Uh, the day uh, that we are using today, we have a couple of very, very long hymns. We're not going to do all of the verses, otherwise service will be like an hour and a half long. So uh, pay attention to the, the verses that are listed. Um, that first one and that last one, the middle two hymns are just kind of like normal. And finally, I'm told that James Mervinger is 77 years young today. Happy birthday. Where's he at? I know he's here. I saw him walk in. There he is. He's hiding back there. Happy birthday, James. I think I may have just gotten an annoyed look on that one, but happy birthday anyway, James. With that, I'm going to invite everyone to go ahead and get up out of their seats, and we will join together in our first time.
as we gather our hearts for worship on this day, we know that there are those things in our lives that stand in the way of our relationship with our Maker. And so now I invite you to a time of mutual confession as we join together in the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on page 56 in our hymnals. We gather together today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a moment now for personal reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given the Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us join in reading responsibly from Psalm 93 as printed in your bulletins. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that they cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. I hear the sound of many waters. I hear the waves of the sea. Mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure. And holiness is our house, Lord, forever and forevermore. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God. You anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We need some young people to come and do this instead of us old fogies. <laughs> so think about it because it's not that bad. And if you get a word that is strange like these biblical names, just skip over it or tell us to read it ourselves. <laughs> The first lesson comes from Daniel, chapter 9, 9 to 10, and 13 and 14. This is about the judgment before the ancient one. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and his wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night vision, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given the dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The second lesson comes from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4b through 8. This is John speaking to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. It is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come the Almighty. Here is the lessons for today. Judy's right on those names. Sometimes there's some strange ones in there. But we just say whatever we say because no one else knows how to pronounce them either. <laughs> We're going to invite the kids to come on up for the children's message. Come on up there, everybody. few that aren't quite sure back there. That's okay. That's okay. How's everybody today? Are you guys doing good? Yeah? Okay. Now some of you guys are pretty small and you probably don't know your ABCs yet and that's okay. But some of you do. What is the first letter of the alphabet? A. A. Awesome. Good job. What's the last letter of the alphabet? Z. Yes. That is right. Now, here's a question. It's an important one. What language do we all speak? English. English. Okay, and in English, the first letter is A, and the last letter is Z, right? That's what we were just talking about. Okay, now, do any of you speak Greek? No. No, you don't. Greek's a different language, right? But that's okay, it's just a different one that we don't, that we don't understand. But, do you think they also have an alphabet in Greek? They do. And do you know what might be the first letter of the Greek alphabet? No? 
I'll give you a hint. It's kind of like A for us, but it's called alpha. Can you say that? Alpha. alpha. Yeah, it's like alphabet, isn't it? Yeah. You're actually spot on. He, he, we have a scholar up here. That's pretty great. Okay, now the last letter of the Greek alphabet, do you think it sounds like Z? No. No, it doesn't. It's a different one, although they have a letter that sounds like that too. It's, it's omega. Can you say that one? Omega. omega. So, omega. Yeah. It sounds pretty cool, right? Omega. omega. Yeah. So, we have alpha, which is the first one. And we have omega, which is the last one, right? So that's the start and the end. Is there a baby? Where's a baby? Oh, you're a baby. Oh. But, uh, so, the reason I'm bringing that up, so in what Judy just read for us, there's a part where Jesus talks about being the alpha, which is the first one, right? And the omega, which is the last one. And what Jesus is saying there is, is, or what God is saying there is reminding us that at the beginning, God is there, and at the ending, God is there. And God's also with us the whole way through, too. And that's pretty cool, right? So no matter what letter we're talking about, or no, no matter what language we might be thinking about, or what alphabet we're thinking about, we can remember that at the beginning, God is there, and all the way through, God is still here. And that at the end, God is still there, too. And that God loves us all the time, no matter when it is. And that's pretty cool, right? Right? Yes, I thought so, too. Okay, let's say it. No! <laughs> Dear God, we thank you that you are always with us. And that you have promised to be with us from the beginning all the way to the end. And all the time in between. Help us remember you are always there. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thanks for coming up, everybody. Yes, the word alphabet does come from the Greek letter alpha. He was right. I'll let the congregation arise now for the gospel. Our gospel lesson for today, Christ the King Sunday, comes from John chapter 18, verses 33 through 37. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? And Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, people of God, may the grace and peace of our triune God be yours today and forever. Amen. Over the course of the last few weeks, in some behind the scenes kind of administrative stuff here for the congregation. I've been working on a constitutional amendment. Ooh. Does that sound exciting? No. Does it sound like a lot of legalese that's really kind of boring? Yes. Here's what a few people who are on the committee can attest to, though. I enjoyed this work far more than I have any right to. And the only reason for that is because there's kind of a linear, like, progression of thought that goes into writing these resolutions. Now, when you see it, it'll be in the newsletter here in December. When you see it, you'll understand why. But because this is true, then this. And because that's true, then this. And because that's true, then this. I actually, for some reason that I do not understand, enjoy that. There's probably something wrong. The only thing I can compare this to, from my own history, 
goes back to when I was a high school sophomore and I was taking geometry. Now, how many of you remember geometry? How many of you loved geometry? I see a couple of hands. Good for you people. My favorite thing to do in geometry was writing proofs. Again, I'm a nerd. I know I am. But I loved it. And it's that same linear progression of thought. Because this is true, that means this is true. Because this is true, that means this is true. Now, I enjoyed it. A few people out here raised their hands. They enjoyed this type of thing as well. But not everyone does, right? I know for some people, it just doesn't compute. It's not fun. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. And that's okay. I have things in my life that I don't get either. Mechanics, for instance. I can maybe change my oil, and that's about the extent of it. You ask me what a carburetor is, I'm going to scratch my head and stare at you blankly. Oh. <laughs> there are those things in our lives that just don't make sense. I hear you talking out there. <laughs> now, if you have anything in life that just doesn't compute, that just doesn't line up and make sense, today you are in good company. Because today, Pilot is in the exact same boat. We got this brief exchange that's going on during what's known as Jesus' trial shortly before his crucifixion. But before we really get into that, we kind of got to go backwards and just give a little bit of a background. So, Jesus has been doing his ministry over the course of the last three years. He's been traveling around Israel, the Holy Land, Palestine, whatever you want to call it. He's, he's spending this time, and he's talking about this idea of a kingdom of heaven, or a kingdom of God sometimes, we, we hear it called. And he's talking about how it will be a reversal, that the things that the world sees as power and prestige and authority and, and, and even blessings are not what the world is going to think it is. That the kingdom of heaven comes near to those who are humble and those who are repentant and those who are honest about themselves. That's where the kingdom of heaven is found. Now, he's highlighting all of these different points that he's making, not only teaching, not only preaching, but he's also performing miracles. These amazing moments that are impossible, seemingly, showing that he holds the power of God because he, in fact, is also God. Now, through all of this that's been going on, Jesus has been earning a lot of fanfare. A lot of people really like what he has to say and what he's doing. But on the flip side, a lot of people don't. And it's a lot of the people who tend to be in those positions of power and authority that Jesus is kind of pushing back against, but they kind of don't like what he has to say. And they want him to be quiet. And they want him to stop all these things that he's talking about. Well, if history shows us anything, it's that if you really want someone to be quiet and not talk anymore, well, kill them. Yeah, it's sad. It's not nice. And so that's what's going on. The powers that be have, cons have conspired against Jesus, and they want to have him put to death. But there's another aspect of history that's also important here. Israel is not self-governed. They are controlled by the Roman Empire, the ultimate authority in the time. And so the leaders that are pushing back against Jesus, they don't have the authority to have him killed. And so they trump up some charges against him, and they send him off to the person who actually does have this authority, and that's the Roman governor who goes by the name of Pontius Pilate. Now, Pilate doesn't seem to know Jesus at all. He's maybe heard about this guy, but he doesn't really seem to know anything about him. And so he's trying to wrap his head around, who, who is this guy? Who is this person that these leaders over here are so mad at? And what's going on? And so they're having this back and forth. And it, it starts before our passage today, and then there's this back and forth during the passage, and then it continues on after the passage. And all of this is aimed at Pilate just trying to understand who is this guy, what's he up to, and why is he even here in the first place? Now, Pilate, being a Roman governor, he understands the political realm, the political nature of things. And so that's what he's trying to look, to look at Jesus through. This is the lens that he's trying to use. So he asks the question over and over and over again, are you a king? Now this is an odd thing to think about for us, perhaps. We don't have a king. That's not the way our political system works. Unless you watch The Crown on Netflix, you're probably completely unfamiliar, and that's okay. But 
That's what Pilate understood. Are you a king? Now, if Jesus says, yes, I am a king, then that means that he is trying to lead an insurrection and lead them against the Romans, and that's bad, and that deserves a death sentence. If, he, if Jesus says yes, okay, Pilate knows how to deal with this. But if on the flip side, Jesus says, no, I'm not a king, well, then there's no reason for him to be there, and Pilate can just dismiss this whole thing and send him on his way. And so that's what he's trying to understand. Are you a king? Are you the king of the Jews? And can the guy get a straight answer? No, I see a lot of head shooting. Are you a king? Why do you ask? Are you a king? Who told you? Are you a king? Maybe. If I was a king, my followers would be trying to stop this from happening. Oh, so you are a king. I didn't say that. <laughs> it's this weird back and forth, right? Yes, I'm embellishing some, but... But it's this oddball back and forth. And Jesus is not giving a straight answer. And Pilate can't get a straight answer. And they just go round and round and round with this until finally, after quite a bit more time goes by, Pilate caves to pressure and eventually says, okay, we're going to say that he thinks he's king of the Jews and we're going to crucify him because of that. That's what will ultimately end up happening. But Pilate can't quite understand and maybe, just maybe, we can't either. Today is Christ the King Sunday. Now, when we think about Christ as King, this is something that we think about out there in that unknown future. It feels very end times -y. Like when this reality comes to a close, and whatever happens next, Jesus is going to be King. But it's not like anything political, not like anything I think we can wrap our heads around. And we just don't really understand it. And you know what? That's okay. There's a distinction. I actually picked it up twice today in the second reading that Judy shared with us earlier out of Revelation. Now, I knew it was in the opening line. I didn't realize it was in the last line, but it's here as well. It's this promise, this greeting that's coming on behalf of God. Now, Revelation itself is a very strange book of the Bible. There's a lot of really weird imagery in there that we struggle to wrap our heads around, but it's also full of promises. And I think there's a promise that's in this greeting. Grace and peace to you from the one who is and the one who was and the one who will be. Is it just me or does that seem out of order? Think about it. The one who is and was and will be. Should it be the one who was and is and will be? So why does it say not once but twice, the one who is, and was, and will be? Maybe, just maybe, that greeting is revealing something subtle and yet really important. We can only see what's right here, right? We can only experience that which is happening right now in the present. Now we can remember things that happened before. And we can imagine things that will be. But we only experience that which is right here, right now, in the present. And what I love about the scriptures, not just this passage and not just Revelation, but the scriptures as a whole, is that over and over and over again, we have the story of a God who is promised to be present with God's people in one form or another. Now, these forms that God takes on are pretty wild at different times, and we don't really understand them, and that's okay. But we have the promise over and over and over again that God is right here. We have a God who is with us. Now, here in our Lutheran expression of, of faith, or our Lutheran denomination, whatever we want to call it, we put a lot of stock into something we call the sacraments. These actions, these moments when through the physical elements, whether it's the water of baptism or the bread and the wine that we're going to share in communion today, that through those physical elements and the promise of God, God has made the promise to be right here, right now, in a way that we can experience. Now, it's a mystery. I don't know how it works. I don't get how it works. But the promise of the one who is way bigger than I am has said, I will be found here, and it is for you. Whatever the ultimate reign of Jesus, the kingdom of God, whatever 
we want to call it whatever it's going to look like out there. Maybe that doesn't really matter in the long run. Maybe what really matters for us right here, right now, is that God has taken a look at every single one of you and said, you're mine, I love you, and I will be with you. That's a promise that God makes for all people. And that's a promise that nothing will overcome, even in those times when you might not feel like it. So here in just a few more minutes, when we receive the bread, when we receive the wine, remember that promise. This is God, and this is for you. Amen. This time our service continues as we offer back to God that which God is supposed to give us with our offerings. A few announcements to share while we're collecting our offering. Um, a reminder, Operations Committee will be meeting us Tuesday evening. 6 p.m. so that will be happening uh, next Sunday due to the holiday weekend there will not be education but worship will still happen at the normal time at 10 15 and uh, we are also going to be celebrating holy baptism for several members of the family who are sitting right down there and it's gonna be awesome so happy 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 times next Sunday you aren't gonna want to miss out on that. Uh, any items for the December newsletter uh, if those can be into the office yet this week uh, so time you can put that together that will be great um, also, just a reminder of our upcoming December schedule. We've got some special opportunities. Uh, on the 12th, the Coral Leaders will present their Christmas program. And on the 19th, the Sunday School will present their Christmas program. And then on the 24th, of course, we'll have Christmas Eve. We'll have our two times of 5 and 10 p.m. for our candlelight service. So just note that those are coming up next month, but are not far off. And because Christmas is coming up, we actually, you'll notice, there's no Christmas tree up here yet. But later on today, at approximately 12.30, there will be. So, if you are interested in helping put up a Christmas tree after a choir practice is done, I'm told a few people would really appreciate it because many hands make light work. 
So if you're still around, hey, that's going on. If not, that's okay. But uh, just know that that's going on. So if you want to help out, feel free. It's quite a chatty day out there, isn't it? <laughs> it's wonderful. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood that is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. The table is prepared, and all are welcome to join the Lord's Supper.
Son and the Holy Spirit. 